All right, so I'm going to start with niche as well. I'm going to follow your format a little bit here. And you'll see me looking off because I did take notes on this because I didn't want to forget uh, some of the points here. So my niche, I'm actually going to go for real estate agents. <sighs> Love it. Now, some of my reasons were the same as yours. So again, I look to them and I go, there are ways to access the decision makers in this space. So I really like that. They're also a high margin business. Like, I don't think anyone looks out there and goes, oh, real estate agents, they don't make any money. <laughs> yep. It's also a niche I know well, very well, from all the time we spend in real estate, right? So again, unique advantage. I hope people are picking up on that. It's like play in the spaces you know and you will likely do very well, um, I think is a really interesting one. But the one I'm going to throw in here is they're not as tech savvy as some niches. Mm. So um, when I had a website design agency uh, or even some of the other ventures I've been involved in, one of the challenges we would run up against is the clients that were in tech would touch stuff and tinker. Hey, <laughs> tell I've just tried to create a new page and like, I try to put it in the main menu and like now the whole thing's broken. <laughs> yeah, and I also think that people that are in online don't value online. So this yeah, is the right. ice to Eskimos thing. So if you are a website developer and let's say you're selling websites to ad agencies, right, and they're used to updating pages and things like that, is like they don't value it in the same way as a, a real estate agent would in which it's like, well, I don't even want the login. I just want to call you or email you and you do the thing. I love it. You know what? Are, you know one of the industries that I just like boycotted completely because of that reason was e-com. I said, screw being a web design company for e-com because in their business, they genuinely have to understand how to use the website. <laughs> yeah, well, they build the skills in such a way where they wouldn't value them. Completely. So I would avoid all of those niches right out of the gate. Unless, yeah. I mean, there are some reasons why you may go into them if you have like some unique value where it's I like that's that was the counter. To. But the point I would make there is that if you enter into a niche where your client is essentially going to be competing against you, don't do it. Why would they pay you to update images or do anything if, if they could do they it? Could do it? Yeah. It's, it, and then you're going to say time, but even then, my finding is very different. Very, very different. So yep. really key point on that one there. A point I'll make on this one that's very different to yours is I really thought about who has continuous need. So with uh, many people who build websites, essentially they're brochure websites, they build them once and then there's not really much to do. Right. So there's, And even with dentists, what do they really change? Yeah, Not so they, a heap. Yeah, a couple of landing pages, a couple of SEO, hence why I've had to put the subscription model more on reporting insights and analytics as opposed to doing web specifically. Honestly, that's what I loved about your answer so much is you found a way to build value recurringly that wasn't content-based or something on the website. I didn't pick up on that. So I would say that's one of the things that makes our answers very differently. Also a reason why you might vote for Charlie. His answer's a little bit better, just saying. <laughs> it's a little bit more web. <laughs> well, this is one of those things where I was thinking about this and there's a few other industries I'll mention as well. Real estate agents have a lot of information moving in their businesses. So this is when listings are, new listings coming up. They've got to interact with things like uh, realestate.com.au or Zillow if you're in the States. Yep. Right, So there's a lot of moving parts and continuous need for their web to be good, right? to be set up well. Emails are got to go out, brochures, graphics. Right? There's a heap of stuff that actually goes in, in, in on a real estate business that people may not appreciate. So I look at that and go, that's my honeypot. That's absolutely where if I can land a client in this space and offer really good support services around their continuous need, that's how I'm building my recurring revenue business model here. I, I can't look at you without thinking about Winnie the Pooh on the honeypot. <laughs> on the honeypot. <laughs> on the honeypot. <clears throat> I, like I like the idea of, so if I understand correctly, you're talking about complementary services that you can provide on top of yours or is it that you are <clears throat> the middle that they have to refer to? Well, this is where I guess in your case, you've kind of mentioned the idea of the booking system, right? You're working with it there. In this case here, I'd be working with like the real estate listing service, right? Because, yep. you know, we know about XML feeds and all these other totally. things. I won't make it over complicated or techie, but I just want to say that it's the idea of there's a whole bunch of information and content that moves around a real estate business. 
listings, when opens are, emailing people, the CRM, a heap of stuff, that all needs to work and function. That is where someone who's strong in web and can support one of these companies can do very, very well. You know what's so funny about both of our points? It's like <laughs> we both dive into the concept of being completely accountable where if something that we build does not work, the business kind of stops operating. Yeah, right. What we're, need? We're, we're at, uh, quite a few web design companies that I know of strategically try to get out of the way of being mission critical to someone else's business to the point of, uh, like, I oh, know that the, the form will just email it to you. But yeah, wh- wh- why? What do, you, what do you mean? Like, and so it's really interesting just the observation of both of us just going, like, how do we get into being a necessary service that they have to pay for as opposed to an optional? Well, let's go further than that. I've decided in this market, I'm going premium. So real estate agents particularly, and if anyone knows a few real estate agents will appreciate this, who's got the nicer car, who's got the nicer house, who's got the nicer suit, who's, where is your uh, office on the street, how big is your floor plan? Like they are very, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it, ego-driven. It's a very status game. Yep. Who's got the nicest website and who's got the best tech matters to them. It's important. They don't want low-quality stuff. They don't want to be perceived as low-quality. They want to be perceived well. And I look at that and going, it's a market that's willing to pay for premium. Like they could be getting around in Priuses and it'd be very cost-effective with all the driving to houses and fuel efficient. And Maserati is better. (laughs) Because that's the impression they want to leave with clients. So that's what I want to lean into here is like I'm going to go for value and that's what I'm going to represent and that's what I'm going to sell on in in, in all honesty. Like because I think that has appeal to the market itself themselves. I totally it yes. Uh, I love this because there's one real estate agent that I know in Melbourne that I saw when I was in university and every year he'd get his new Maserati. They painted the outside of the building. Like it was just a pure status game. And it's funny, he was always the one with the most amount of listings in that area. <laughs> it was great. It was just I, like human nature. Humans are amazing, right? Yeah. Humans are absolutely amazing. Hey, fellow business owner, if this topic and value-packed short video has resonated with you at all and you want to dive deeper into creating wealth inside and outside your business, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.